Hello and welcome to Florida Focus. I'm Emmy McCarthy. Tampa Bay Rays fans are remembering longtime radio announcer Dave Wills tonight. Now the 0-1 to Lowry on its way. Swinging a ground ball to second. This should do it. Aki has it. Takes it to second himself. This improbable season has another chapter to it. The Rays are going to the World Series. Wills died Sunday morning in his sleep at his Tampa home. He spent 18 years with the Rays and announced many major games, including the World Series in 2008 and 2020. The 58-year-old leaves behind his wife and two kids. Authorities are investigating a fire that took down four townhomes over the weekend. Dispatchers received a call for a three-alarm fire at around 9.30 p.m. Saturday. According to Pasco County Fire Rescue, it took an hour and a half to control the fire. All four townhomes are a complete loss and a fifth had severe damage. No one was injured. A person was saved after being in the Gulf of Mexico for eight hours near the Skyway Bridge. The U.S. Coast Guard received a call just after midnight that a person was in the water. After a continuous search with the St. Petersburg Fire Rescue, the person was found at around 4.30 a.m. on Saturday. They were alive and conscious and were transported to the hospital. With spring break coming up, many beaches in the Bay Area are facing red tide. Ashley Uhas visited some of those beaches. With enormous amounts of marine life and throat irritation, locals and tourists will not want to visit any beaches anytime soon. Red tide is concerning to the public as it's killing marine life and washing them up to shore. This causes the unsafe swimming water. The bacteria can cause itchy throats, coughing, and sneezing. Tourist Mark Young says red tide is affecting his stay in Florida. As someone who's gone to Florida for a vacation over the years, that's one thing we noticed right away is it doesn't make it very pleasant. It almost makes you want to turn around and go back because you're coughing. For us, it's affecting our sinuses and stuff like that. According to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, there were 56 samples of red tide in southwest Florida. The FWC and USF College of Marine Life says there is a high concentration of red tide in Pinellas, Hillsborough, Sarasota, and other counties along the southwest. Red tide has been sitting in the ocean since February. Honeymoon beach worker John Yanchora says red tide caused a huge beach cleanup. Me and my supervisor actually, uh, on Sunday morning, we cleaned up seven bags of fish from the beach. Yeah, and a lot of people were out here coughing on Sunday. A lot of people, they came out for a couple hours and left. So, uh, you know, so if you have a respiratory problem, I wouldn't recommend coming out. According to the FWC, if your county has a red tide count over 1 billion, there will be increased water discoloration. Tomorrow is election day in the city of Tampa. On the ballot will be unopposed incumbent Mayor Jane Castor and city council seats in districts one through six. Castor has been active in efforts to increase affordable housing, restore city infrastructure, and improve sustainability. Voters will also be weighing in on four potential changes to the city charter, including revising term limits for council members. Supervisor of Elections Craig Latimer has resources explaining steps to take when voting on Election Day. If you choose to vote in person, trained poll workers at our early voting sites and Election Day polling places will be there to guide you. But if you'd like to be prepared, take a few minutes to watch this video. It walks you through the process so you know just what to expect before you go in to vote. Latimer recommends doing research on candidates and bringing in a filled sample ballot to the polls to be the most prepared. For sample ballot, polling, and other voting information, visit www.votehillsborough.gov. Start your engines. Fans from all over were in the Bay Area Sunday for the Grand Prix of St. Petersburg. Matt Narvaez was there all weekend to cover the race. The stars of the NTT IndyCar Series brought a ton of action to the streets of St. Petersburg. It was a wild race that led to a very happy Swedish crowd. <laughs> That group of race fans traveled from Kumla, Sweden to watch their hometown hero Marcus Ericsson win the Firestone Grand Prix. It was nothing but an exciting 100 laps of racing with close battles and a surprising wreck between the two leaders. That opened up the opportunity for the Swede to claim the checkered flag. Ericsson is of course satisfied with how his weekend went. It was one of those messy St. Pete races that we have sometimes, but uh, I had a good car. Uh, the team did a great job all weekend and I knew, you know, if we can be in a position to fight for the win, we can do it. So. That was all about staying out of trouble and being there for the end and really happy to start a season like this. It's a perfect start.
Considering it was a street course race, fans were everywhere, strolling through the paddock or watching right off the edge of the course. Florida resident Angel Torres loved his experience and encourages others to come and see for themselves. It was all worth it. The long drive, uh, the weekend stay out here, it's definitely worth it. I think it's something that everybody in the state of Florida, if you're a resident of Florida, you should definitely look into this event. It's like a festival. It was a near win for fan favorite Patso Award after losing the lead with only two laps left. Torres and his friends got a shirt signed by him and hoped he would find victory lane. Pick to win, obviously, Pato, uh, Arrow, McLaren team, hopefully see them win. Over 100,000 fans were in attendance during the course of three days. The Grand Prix is estimated to have brought over $50 million to the St. Pete area. In St. Petersburg, Matt Narvaez reporting for Florida Focus. This has been a Florida Focus news break. Have a great night.